Hi everyone, welcome back to another video here at The Construct. My name is Rodrigo and today I'm going to be showing you uh, one of the things you can learn in our new um, fleet management training here at The Construct. It's a three-day intensive training, uh, full day, three days online, everything's online, uh, with human interaction with us as teachers and um, we are teaching people uh, the fleet management system created by um, Open Robotics who's uh, very involved in the creation of ROS and ROS2. Uh, they've developed this new fleet management system called uh, Open RMF in which you can uh, control basically fleets of robots. Um, so, this is made in order to uh, facilitate the operations of a place where you have tons of robots, right? Where you have uh, 50 robots that are in charge of delivering things, 25 in charge of um, patrolling, things like that. So, it's thought for this kind of scenario. So, I'm going to show you what you can learn. In, in our training uh, and how you can determine whether or not uh, you might want to use this open RMF system into your application. So let me quickly try to explain what you can learn. So yes, we're going to be able to control uh, fleets of robots. In this example I'm showing, uh, we have a robot cafeteria in which our fleet are delivery robots. So for now, there's two robots that are capable of patrolling and delivering things, right? So you establish this and you tell this to RMF and it doesn't even have, your robot doesn't even have to have ROS2. If you have an API that can interface with uh, OpenRMF and tell it navigate here, it would work. In the ROS2 scenario, which is what we teach here because, you know, we want to use ROS2, uh, all the RMF needs to know is the navigate to pose action that is done with NAV2. If you don't know how NAV2 works in ROS2, you can also take this training to uh, figure out how to do namespace navigation in case you have, in this case, two robots that are the same you want to control them separately. Uh, so the point here is that OpenRMF will then look at the robots available uh, once you send a task and then decide which one is best fit uh, for that task. Uh, and it's looking at things like battery levels and um, location and whether or not it can get there, right? So this is expandable, so you can do as many robots as you want. So let me just show you the quick and example of what you can learn in our training. So just to do a little bit of a overview. So you will be able to use inter the internet. So you'll be able to open up a website and then send a delivery command there, you know? For example, in this case, we want to deliver a coffee uh, and we say it to a website. Then that website communicates with OpenRMF and it does what I just said. It decides which one's best fit and then sends the robot to the location and to that part, to any robot. So uh, if, if there's a robot that's configured to do that task, it will consider it. And then what happens is a bidding war, sort of, uh, between all of the robots that say, hey, I can do this task for this this cost. And then that's how uh, the RMF decides who which robot it's gonna do. And another great thing about RMF, it, it does traffic deconfliction. So it resolves issues when there's too many robots mo moving around and there would be uh, trap too much traffic and it, it it's in charge of telling the robot 
where to go and avoid in order to avoid these traffic jams let's say so basically that's the um, overview of it so let's look at the example here all right so here you can see a little simulation and it has two robots we have one robot right here the other robot right here this is supposed to be a little cafeteria with a fleet of two robots uh, this is our delivery robot right and here over in the graph of an Arvis we can see the RMF map so you can see where the robots are this is the RMF representation and where they can navigate you give them uh, lanes to travel under and, and nodes to go to and you can see here that I've named them according to tables so now that you have that we can go to this a website you know you can if you know web development you can do any website you want this is the default one that is used for that open robotics provides us which is really nice and let's see you can just select here a bunch of tasks and if you have to do a loop which is patrol you can select the locations to to for it to go and then we here we can see the uh, barista robots that we have and whether they're moving what's their battery and what location it is because you can also support multiple floors uh, for this but uh, so far only one level uh, that we've been able to do because we don't have <laughs> big buildings so all right now we uh, look at let's look at the simulation so the idea here is that I'm gonna just simply tell the website go pick up let me just get to it I'm gonna tell it go pick up this cup this is just a, a coffee you know so all I need to do is tell the website and then RMF should be able to decide which one is best suited uh, the first glance should be this one because it's closer but you know it takes everything into account so maybe this one has higher battery etc so let's look at how that works so over here we can just select delivery uh, here we'll just say any coffee because they're all the same and then just submit that request right so once we go here we should see there we go we see that a robot got that uh, task and is now going towards where the coffee is and it picked the closest one and makes sense because they both have the same battery but for example let's go back to the website and let's just tell another one to do a loop from let's say table one right to I don't know uh, table to top while this is going on right so while this is moving you send another task so then the RMF should be able to recognize it so there we go we see a plan being made from the second robot uh, that is going to where we told it to go as this one is arriving so this is the benefit you can just send a ton of tasks and just forget about it without worrying about each little navigation system so we can see that this robot right here already arrived next to it and in this case we have a scenario in which there's a person here you know that's ready to load the uh, cup into here but you can also set a robot arm things like that in case of a robot we have a little GUI here as you can see that uh, we're gonna send a message to the RMF telling it hey my robot is loaded I have put the cup in it so we just click here on loaded and in theory uh, someone has grabbed that cup and moved it to the uh, robot and we can see that now the robot is trying to deliver it to where we told it to go in this case it's going to this point right here so we actually might see the traffic deconfiction might not uh, but here we'll just do here so we can see both robots 
There we go. You can kind of see it better like this. Um, so now we just wait for the everything to complete and now we'll see that the blue robot is waiting for this guy to move away and then we should be able to see the second robot, the blue robot up here on top, start to move. So yes, basically, this is pretty much what you can, a simple example of what you can do. Um, you can create this simple application in order to, you know, start uh, to start managing fleets, right? So uh, this is of course expandable, so you can keep adding more and more. And the idea is to to have an expandable system that you can use in order to to try this. Uh, so basically, this is the uh, the example of what you will do, what you will learn to do in our fleet management system. Uh, sorry, training. Uh, in order to do something like this. And you can think about what application you want to use based on this. And again, it's open source and it's the big advantage of this is that it's scalable and you don't even have to have ROS2. You can have anything that can interface with a Python API. Uh, so yes, uh, make sure you check the link in the description for our training and um, I hope you guys join, and if you don't, there's many other uh, programs we have running. For example, we have our second edition of our master's uh, program here at The Construct, in which we teach you all of the basic skills in order to become a ROS developer. Uh, we go through theory, and it's heavily based on practice, so you have a final project at the end and an internship included with one of our affiliated companies uh, so you can uh, hopefully get a job after your ma our master's degree uh, our, in our first um, master's we have one student uh, that has a job offer already so this is things that these are this is a pra master's that teaches you the steps to become a ROS developer as well as we could make it and we're always improving it so check that out too in order uh, in case you want to do a full-on six-month uh, master's program with us at the construct check the link in the description and uh, we'll see you guys for the next video thank you very much and bye bye